I, I was watching this talk by Father Chris Alar, and I thought this sign of the times was very important to share with you. It's part of private revelation, so it may or may not happen. It's worth spending five or ten minutes to listen to Father Chris, just in case it does. Eight days of darkness. Many recent blesseds have talked about this. What do you need to know? All right. Personally, and this is not church teaching, I believe the world is so far gone that it will take a direct intervention from God to turn it around. I really don't feel that there is any other way at this point. The world and the Pandora's boxes that have been opened legally, culturally, socially, I don't think you can ever put them back in the box. I don't think we can ever go back to the truth in terms of the laws that we have and the way that we are going unless there is a direct intervention from God. And I believe that will happen at the end. The illumination of conscience that many saints and blesseds and mystics talk about, we will see our souls as God sees us. You know, it's funny because even St. Faustina said she had no idea how the, even the littlest tiny sins so greatly offend our Lord. I mean, when I go to confession, I confess the biggies, right? Selfishness and gluttony, the capital sin of, you know, anger or impatience or, or whatever it might be. We know the big ones. But what about the little tiny ones where you, where you haven't decided to reach out to that friend or, or maybe you walk by somebody and don't even give a smile because your pride was hurt by them a while ago. We don't think about that. Well, I'm in the right there. Well, our Lord is telling us through St. Faustina that even those little things are greatly hurtful and offensive to him. And in the end, where we believe there'll be an illumination of conscience, we will see all that. We will see our souls as God sees us, and we will absolutely be enlightened. Now, this is a grace. This is a mercy. I've actually had this happen in a mini way once in my own life not long ago. Woke up at three o'clock in the morning and man, all these things came flooding into my mind and my heart that, gee, I didn't realize that, Lord. Whoa, I missed that boat. Whoa, I'm doing that wrong. Holy mackerel. And this is just a grace. It's not a punishment. That way we can make corrections. So God is giving you this chance. Later will come the three days of darkness. We were prepped, I believe, for this by the quarantine. Whenever in human history has mankind been relegated to his houses, shut the doors, and the whole world at one time been sent home, I really believe this is preparation for the three days of darkness, getting ready so that when this comes, we will be prepared. In that three days of darkness, the saints tell us nothing will provide any light except blessed candles. Now, do they have to be beeswax? That's a state of contention. Some say yes, others say no, but I've not been able to find in any of the writings of the saints I'm going to tell you about where it says they absolutely have to be beeswax. Personally, I got mine as beeswax anyway to be safe. What does it hurt? But they need to be blessed. Please get them blessed by a priest. If you are living in sin, perpetual sin, and you don't care, those candles, even those candles won't light, the saints tell us. This is mentioned. This is biblical. This is not made up. The three days of darkness is actually in the book of Exodus, uh, the ninth plague in Egypt, all right, where darkness covers the land for three days. Let's look at the next slide. Here's my saint, Saint Faustina. We Marian fathers, we make sure that we follow what she says was given by the Lord. And she said, Jesus told her, let's go to the next slide. This is what Jesus told her. Write this. Before I come as the just, just judge, I am coming first as the king of mercy. Before the day of justice arrives, there will be given to people a sign in the heavens of this sort all light in the heavens will be extinguished this is the darkness right 
and there will be great darkness over all the earth. Then the sign of the cross will be seen in the sky and from the openings where the hands and the feet of the Savior were nailed will come forth great lights which will light up the earth for a period of time. This will take place shortly before the last day. Wow. Those are the words of St. Faustina. This is important because those are not to be taken lightly. Now, what are some of the other saints and blessed say? All right. In 1820, a, a, a mystic by the name of Blessed Kanori Mora prophesies that horrible chastisements will come when, quote, the sky was covered with clouds so dense, the dismal and dismal, that it was impossible to look at them without dismay. During the worldwide hurricane that follows, she said, demons will drag away all the wicked, while saints Peter and Paul will protect all true and good people, meaning the Christians who follow Christ is what she specifically said. But we want to hope that our Lord's mercy will reach out to all those who are seeking him in any way. Let's take a look at another blessed. This is Blessed Anna Maria Tage. Tagi, some say. Wow. She lived 1769 to 1837. She was a wife, mother, mystic. Her memorial is on June 9th. What did she say? She said, there will come over all the earth an intense darkness lasting three days and three nights. Nothing will be visible and the air will be laden with pestilence. That means sickness and disease. During this darkness, artificial light will be impossible. Only blessed candles can be lighted and will afford illumination. He who out of curiosity opens his windows to look out and leaves his house will fall dead on the spot. All right. So if you believe this mystic, now again, this is not dogmatic revelation or doctrinal church teaching. But if you want to follow this mystic in some of the private revelation, when that darkness hits, close those doors. Don't say I forgot the toolbox out in the shed and decide to open the door and go out. Some of the saints tell us that voices will appear. Demons will come and hell will be unleashed. And my good friend Daniel O'Connor in the coming of the kingdom, his good friend of mine, talks about this, about what will happen at the end. And, 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 and saints tell us, blessings tell us that demons will be unleashed and all the demons, hell will be, all the demons of hell will be unleashed on the earth. And even voices that sound like your loved ones will come to the door. So for me, it'll be voices from my past saying, Father Chris, let me in. You're a priest. And that's going to be tempting. But we have to pray for God's discernment, the gift of the Holy Spirit to make those right decisions. But the saints are telling us, be careful. All right. Now let's go on. Even Medjugorje. The next slide. We see here Medjugorje. Here, each Medjugorje seer is supposed to receive 10 secrets. We know there's been an update now on some of this. That at least some of which involve prophecies of global chastisement. Now, before that happens, men will be given a series of three warnings announced in advance by one visionary, swiftly followed by a great sign centered at the apparition site, but visible all over the world. Now, many expect this to be a giant red cross of light in the sky. All right. The three days of darkness and an era of era of peace are supposed to arrive soon afterwards. Now, if you want to learn more about Medjugorje, please visit Mary TV. My good friends, Dennis and Kathy Nolan and others who work behind the scenes there. They have the only broadcast from Medjugorje and the sites of the apparition. And they're constantly viewing and bringing us what Our Lady is saying and the messages of Medjugorje.
my adorable Jesus. May our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. 